Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. In this video we will go through some of the best malware analysis tools that I use on a regular basis that should help you analyze any new EXE file in a static or dynamic capacity. Now obviously one of the first tools you need to do dynamic analysis is a virtual machine. If you don't know how to set one up I've made a full tutorial on how to do so, link in the description. But now we will move on to the other tools. One of the first tools we'll be looking at is Process Explorer. This is part of the Sys internal suite, which is now maintained by Microsoft. It's an excellent tool to get information about any system at a glance very quickly. As you can see, it shows us all the process running on the system currently, the amount of CPU and RAM that they're using, a description and the company name listed. They also have a fancy plugin where you can see the virus total results for each of the executables. Now I have that enabled. In order to do the same, you need to go into options, first total, check first total.com, and you can also submit unknown executables so that everything gets scanned. Now, apart from obviously giving you this data at a glance, you can also look at a process specifically by double clicking on it, and this will tell you a lot more. So you can look at the path, the command line, auto start location if it has one, and then you can look at the details of performance, graphs, disk and network. You can also look at threads, TCP IP, any communications that it's making over the internet, security, environment, and my personal favorite, strings, because this can again easily let you find if there's something suspicious within the application. A lot of applications are obfuscated, so if you do static analysis, you might not notice certain strings, but once they're in memory, they're going to get unpacked, and so they will show up in here. Now, of course, you can also take actions on the process. You can kill them, create a dump that's useful for forensics. It's just a really good all-around tool to start off with. If you're an absolute beginner and you want to look at your system, try to understand how it operates, what the processes are doing, how would you even go about recognizing malware from other processes, this is a great place to start. Not to mention, it's also useful if you want to terminate a malware process very quickly. It's a bit more advanced than Task Manager, but not too much more advanced as some of the other tools we'll be covering. Now, a quick alternative to this is Process Hacker. This is something I use quite a lot as well. It's a little bit more simplistic. The only thing I really miss here is the Vars Total plugin, but this is also an excellent tool to get started. It has the same functionality with regards to allowing you to view strings, modules, and all that good stuff. Now, one of the simplest tools that you can use is Auto Runs. This is again part of Sys Internals, and as the name suggests, all it does is give you a list of every single program that runs at startup for a given system. And this is very useful in finding malware. And just like Process Explorer, it has a virus total plugin, so you can very quickly see if there's a malicious process that's running on startup on any given system. Very useful for quick diagnostics. If you want to quickly tell if there's some malware that's loading on a system, this is probably the easiest way to do it. And it's much more extensive than the startup list that you get with Task Manager. So definitely recommend having this in your toolkit. Another amazing tool, which is a little bit more advanced, but a must have for doing advanced malware analysis is Process Monitor. As the name suggests, it allows you to monitor process and see exactly what they're doing, not just in terms of how much CPU they're using and what they're running, but all the instructions that they're passing to the operating system, essentially. As you can see here, we're looking at registry queries, attempt to create a file. So it shows all the operations that the process is doing along with the path and the result, whether or not it was successful. And then if we want to look at any specific event, we can go into process, stack, and this can even allow you to trace actions to their origins. Now, if we turn on auto scroll, as you will see, there's a lot going on on a system at any given time, even if you're not doing anything. Like this is an idle system with no programs open with the exception of Process Monitor and Process Explorer. But as you can see, we're overwhelmed with data. So one of the biggest skills when it comes to using Process Monitor is the use of filters. So if we go into filters, as you will see, there's already quite a few of these in there, but you can essentially add a filter to exclude or include any specific kind of entry. So for example, if we like, we can say that anything that has a process name of service host, which is SVC host, 
is then excluded. And what this will allow us to do is get rid of that specific process. So if we go ahead and apply it, you will see that the SVC host entries are now gone. That's just a quick example, but there's a lot you can do with filters. It's a very powerful application. You can also change the types of activities that are shown. So for example, you can just remove registry activity if you're not interested in that, or you can get rid of file system activity and just look at registry activity, whatever you want really. I wouldn't say this tool is very useful out of the box. It's not like if you're a beginner and you open this up, you're going to get some magic revelation. But if you learn to use it, it can be very useful in looking at very specific types of actions. If you know what you're looking for, this is exactly the tool you want. Moving along, the next tool we'll look at for dynamic analysis is RedShot. This allows you to take a snapshot of the registry before and after any malware execution event and also scan every directory within the path that you specify. And at the end, it just spits out a log that will allow you to compare the changes that were made within the time frame. So for example, if you wanted to use it with a specific ransomware and test all the changes that it made to your system, you would take a first shot, then execute the ransomware, then take a second shot and then click on compare. It's very intuitive, very easy to use. The log file is a little bit difficult to read, but again, if you just need all the data, the log file is great. So definitely something to have in your arsenal. Now the last tool we're going to cover in this segment of dynamic analysis is the most advanced. It's only DBG and this is a debugger. What that means is it allows you to run specific programs and monitor all the operations that they do all the way down to the CPU registers. Never use this on your host system because again, as a debugger, this will actually run the instructions within the application. It can be extremely useful for going through specific instructions, trying to understand how a program works, reverse engineering it, looking at the actual assembly code live as it's executing. That's probably the most useful function. However, this is an advanced tool. It will take a lot of getting used to. If you want to get started, I've made a tutorial of a CTF type challenge using only DPG that we had on our Discord. So check that out using again the link in the description. So now that we've covered a lot of tools for dynamic analysis from basic to advanced, let's do the same for static analysis. The next tool we're going to talk about is PE Studio. If you're a beginner and you want to look at any piece of malware statically, this is likely the best tool to do it. You can pretty much go in and drag and drop any file that you want in here and it'll tell you everything about it. Well, not everything, but almost. So it'll give you the hashes right away, the import hash, the signature, file version, description, all the metadata right off the bat. And then it also uses the MITRE attack framework to evaluate the file and give you potential indicators. It also does a varse total scan, allows you to look into directories, sections, and see if there's anything unusual. And once the file is analyzed, you will also be able to look at all the strings that it has. If you want to dump the strings that any exe file has, this is probably the easiest and quickest way to do it. it does it automatically. It even analyzes the overlay. So it's just a really useful tool to get this at a glance view of any PEEXE file. The next tool we're going to talk about for static analysis is DNSpy. This is a decompiler, which means it does the reverse of a compiler. Now, if you're familiar with programming, what a compiler does is it takes a high level language and converts that into a lower level machine code. What a decompiler does is the exact opposite. So it takes lower level compiled code and tries to convert it, usually unsuccessfully, into high level language. <laughs> well, it's not much help if it's unsuccessful, Leo, but the point is, sometimes if the application was compiled in, say, Visual Studio, and it's a .NET executable, it's not obfuscated, you will be able to get a very readable source code out of this. So you can pretty much drag and drop any file as with PE Studio, and it will give you the actual source code. And then you can try to read into it. You can look at all the different sections. It's just like a code explorer after that. So it's a very useful tool, a little bit more advanced. You obviously need to be familiar with coding to be able to understand the high level language that it spits out. But if you are familiar with that, this is pretty much the easiest way to get started. Now, the most advanced tool that we're going to cover in this section 
for static analysis is NSA Kidra. Some of you may have heard about this tool and don't be fooled by the Windows XP type interface. This is indeed very advanced and once you open it up, you will be able to disassemble any file. Now, one of the main competitors for this tool, which was used quite a lot before this came out is Ida Pro. Now, I personally still think that Ida Pro is probably a little bit easier to use, but a lot of people do prefer this. Plus, this is free where Ida Pro is a paid program. So if you want to get into disassembly and you want all the power, I think this is as far as you can go when it comes to free tools. Of course, reading assembly is no easy feat and you will have to be familiar with all the assembly level instructions, the structure of the files you are trying to read, and knowledge of how to use this application. The skill ceiling here is very high. So if you're just getting started, probably not the ideal tool, but if you're an advanced researcher, definitely worth looking at. So there you have it. Those are some of my favorite malware analysis tools. Let me know yours in the comments below. All of these are free, by the way. So if any of you are interested and you want to learn more about cybersecurity, you want to get a start doing things like this, feel free to check them out. A big thank you to MCSoft for sponsoring this video. Please check them out using the link in the description. Also check out the pcsecuritychannel.com. And if you're a business and you'd like to work with us, there's a lot of stuff we do. We can help you evaluate your cybersecurity readiness, make sure you choose the right solutions, more details on the website. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security Channel. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.